Life is full of uncertainties, but in God, there is an assurance of a beautiful future. Be inspired as you receive God's word that will stir up faith and confidence in the love that God has for you. Join us today on The Covenant Light. All right. So, look at what he said. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance. I want you to look at those words, which is able. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able, which is able. So it means that our inabilities are no longer the issue. The word of his grace is the issue. What you are not able to do is no longer a problem. The word of his grace is the issue. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. So Paul was leaving them and he said, I am handing you over to the word of his grace. Now, when you hear this phrase, the word of his grace, you tend to think the Bible, the word of God. But that's not what he's saying. It's not just the Bible. The word, that, that phrase, word of his grace, means the message of his grace. It means the, the gospel, all right? The message about the grace of God. The message of God's grace. The word, word there, is the word logos, something said, and thoughts, the body of thought and knowledge about God's grace, the body of thought, revealed thought and knowledge about God's grace, I commend you to it. And it says it's able to build you up and then give you an inheritance. So if something is, if you are not at the place where you can handle something, the, the word of God is the solution. All right, so once again, remember, he was about to leave them. And he handed them over to the word. And he said, you guys binge on the word. That's just what he was saying to them. Binge on the word. Binge on the word. Jesus was going to leave his own people. And then he said something similar to them. In John chapter 15. One moment, please. John 15 and verse 7. So he said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Compare those two statements. Paul said, I'm leaving. Here is the word for you. Abide in the word of his grace, the message about Christ, abide in it. I commend you to it. I'm handing you over to it. I'm, 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 the way you would, uh, uh, I was talking to someone a few, a few uh, uh, hours ago, and the person said, or a few, yesterday, and the person said, oh, um, there's this 15-year-old or 16-year-old who gained admission abroad, and uh, we're paying for the school fees and all of that, and and then we need a guardian. So they they handed that person over to a guardian because this person is 15, 16 year old. Paul said, I'm handing you over to the word of his grace. Jesus says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask what you will, it will be given you. So put those two things together. Paul said, when you do that, it will give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. It will give you an inheritance. Jesus said, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. 
So when we when we keep you know this season we are we are we are talking about staying in the word of God, dwelling in the word, making the word of God your home, making the word of God your home, making it your dwelling place. A lady sent me a message. I'm going to still read it um, uh, in one of our devotions. But she sent me a testimony and she said, you know, she, she just started having a break, you know, like a series of breakthroughs. This season, as we are binging on God's word, you're going to hear a lot of testimonies. I told you about someone who got a house. I told you about somebody, yes, today, somebody was sharing a testimony about, I mean, just lost the job a year ago. And, um, when I when I first came into Nigeria, I said, told, told me about what was going on. I don't have, uh, uh, uh. you know, it was really rough, really really rough. I I knew I knew he was trying to be strong, but it was really rough for him. And then I I I also wanted to mentor him, so I would ask him to come to my house, and I would ask him to. He will arrive at around nine o'clock, and I'll just tell him. I, I'll say, pick up your phone, start from the last message on Covenant Light YouTube. Listen to it, listen to the next one, listen to the next one, keep going, keep going like that. And then he will do that. I will go in, do my work as usual. Around uh, two o'clock, three o'clock, uh, sometimes four o'clock, I'll come out. Uh, I'll give him a bottle of juice and I will send him on his way home. And then the next day he will come again um, to my place. You know, I would see, he will sit down, he will do the same thing and I'll send him on his way home. The next day he'll come again. He did that several times. And um, so he was sharing a testimony with me last week, and he said, um, you know, things just started picking up gradually, gradually. I, I don't want to sound like it was like magic. But God is faithful. We've not followed cunningly devised fables. Please confirm that you can hear me. Yes, you're loud and clear, sir. All right. So he he I'm I'm taking my time, I'm I'm speaking calmly. Like that could do that. I want to tell you, but I I really want to to talk like a friend to all of you. I don't want to preach at you. There's nothing wrong with that. There is a place for that. But we've, and we've done that. But I want to talk to you about this. So take it like a conversation you're having with me right now. So this, this young man said, you know, he began to do that. I thank God for, for, for humility. And I, I won't say a word to him. We will not exchange a word. I'll just sit. I didn't pray for him. I didn't make it a prayer session between us. You know, he would spend some time praying. I told him speak in tongues while you're listening. But I wouldn't come and pray for him. Um, I wanted him to grow into something. All right. So he, he did that. And then he got a testimony. He got a job that came with a car and, and all of that. So this lady calls me and said, you know, God, God, God was talking to her and saying, and saying to her, um, come home, come home. Uh, uh, um, you need to get back home. And she's like, I'm at home. What are you talking about? And then she was, she tuned into the devotions and he heard me teaching about, I mean, you know, staying on the word, heard me talking about staying on the word and making it your home. So the moment I said that, God said, that's what I'm saying to you. You need to make this home. Get back into the word and live there. And live there. Stay there. Dwell there. Visit other places. Come back to it. And she said she started doing that. And then she was just throwing one testimony after the other at me. This has happened. And in fact, the last thing she made to me, she said, I'm going to be in your DM." because testimonies are just flowing in. Maybe you've been doing that already. You've been binging on God's word and it looks like nothing is happening. I can assure you that the word of God works. So stay with it. Stay with it. And think about it this way. Are you? Can you observe what is happening to you? Can you see if you have been binging on the word, Look at what's happening to you. Look at what's happening to you. You are transforming right in front of your eyes. You may not realize it, but your mind is being renewed. And that is even more important to God, I'm telling you, than, than the car and the house and the, 
and the breakthrough and all of that. That is more important because that renewed mind is the growth. And that growth opens up a lot of stuff to you beyond even what you're believing for at the moment. I want to add another component, all right? We've been talking about binging. So I want to, first of all, about this binging, I want to encourage all of you, you know, in this season, take time to, you know, to join in the devotions. It's not just a devotion. It's a training. It's a fast-track spiritual growth training that, that you do by immersing yourself into the Word. So every morning, tomorrow morning again now, I will come your way and we will teach. This week, coming week, we're we are looking at who we are in Christ. You know, uh, uh, um, I'm telling you, it's some of the things God is, is leading me to share with you is, is quite transformative. It's, 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 it's simple, but transformative. And you listen to it, just hear it. And then we, we will post two different links. And you listen to those ones as well and hear them in the course of the, the day. Um, if you want to add some fasting to it, that's okay. You don't have to. So join in and start binging on God's word. Start, you know, I'm going to add another component. I mentioned that, but let's stay with this a little bit. Start binging on the word. Um, the lights are shining where I'm right now. The, there's a bulb up there where you can see me. There's a light shining right in front of me. Um, That this light up here will probably shine till tomorrow morning when I have to go to the airport. What if we're like that with the word? Let it be plain as much as you can. Let it be plain. Just let it be plain. You know, you're cooking, you're sleeping, you're sleeping off. Let the word of God be plain as much as you can, you know. Or just let it be going on. Let it let it become to you like the light that shines and the fan that blow that 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 blows air in your in your room and the AC that comes on and the TV and all of the things we've we've accustomed to turning on and living on. There are things we don't live on. You don't leave the kettle, the boiling boiling kettle, uh, uh, electric boiler, on permanently. You don't leave the 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 electric kettle on permanently. You don't. Leave. But there are things we become accustomed to living on for hours and hours and hours. Lights, uh, air conditioners, uh, 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 fans, you know. Let the word of God become like that. Don't let the word of God be like a pressing iron that you, you turn on, try to use it immediately, then you turn it off and pack it up. The word of God is to be continuously in your life. So that's what binging is. Binge on the word of God. One of the greatest assurances you can have that there is a devil is the fact that you can sit down and watch a series and, and don't feel condemned. There's it's not there's not, nothing evil about sitting down to watch a series. So I'm not, it's not judgment now. But just imagine that you can sit down and watch a series for six hours, five hours, four hours, um, sometimes two hours today, two hours tomorrow, two hours the next, you know, like that. Or an hour, an hour, an hour. Either way, you know, we can sit down and do that. But the moment you make that switch, and instead of it being, if you just, the same sitting position, the same, you know, the same chair, the moment you, what you're now playing is the word of God. You start feeling like getting up. You start feeling like moving. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. You start feeling like, like, you know, like, like, when will it end? It's not yet home. You start feeling restless. It's not yet home. It needs to become home. Home is rest. Home is rest. Home is, ah, you know, I, I have been busy throughout today. I we had inaugurated uh, 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 my, one of my sons went, went, you know, left to start. Pastor Lumi, some of you know him. Um, has gone to start his ministry and we went to inaugurate the church. I first preached in my own church, went, preached in his church, ministered. I went back to my church, had a meeting with the leaders because I'm going to be traveling today and and spent some, some quality time ministering to them and teaching. 
and I came straight from there. I just sat down when I turned in or tuned into this call right now. I just sat down the 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 uh, uh, the people that help you with your luggage and hotels. I've forgotten what they call them, bellboy or something. Just exited this place, and I sat down and tuned into this meeting. But you know how I felt when I sat down. I felt oh, okay. Concierge, thank you. <laughs> I sat down. I went, ah, and that is rest. That's where you should be with the word. Ah. No, Manufo is saying, Father, thank you for your word today. We pray for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts. Let words and thoughts from heaven flow freely through me to your people. Let these words and thoughts continue to speak to us beyond today. Let signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy child, Jesus. In Jesus. That's like, ah. You, when you're going, ah, that's plain. When you're going, ah, that's plain. And the next thing after that, the next thing after that, the next one after that, you know, and you get some other people, but let it be the word of his grace. Let it be the word, the message of the gospel, who you are in Christ, what God has done for you, who, what Christ represents, what is yours now because of Christ. That is the message about Christ. That is the message of grace. You stay in that, stay in that, stay in that, and rest there. Then there's something I said there's something I'm going to I'm going to add to that. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Is somebody receiving what we're talking about today? You know, I don't want to do too much revs, revelation today, revs. I, I want to just, if I get you to do what we're talking about right now, you will have a testimony. If I get you to do what we're talking about right now, you will have a testimony, no matter what's going on right now. You will have a testimony. So Isaiah 55, and verse 8, verse 10 rather. It says, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be. God is that confident. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish that what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So shall my word be. It shall not return to me void. He said, it's like the water, the rain that brings water upon the earth to make things to board, to make, to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, bringing forth the things that need to come into your life, bringing them. It's able to give you an inheritance. Among, the, among them that are sanctified. It is able. It's not asking, it's not telling you, it's not asking for stories. It's not asking you for your, your background. It's not asking whether you went to school. It's not asking whether you were born in a, in a rich family. Listen, I used to be very, very, I used to be very ashamed of my family because we were broke. And I, I regret that. You don't have to be ashamed of your family. Because when, when you do what we're talking about, when you stay in the word, that same family that ordinarily you would have been ashamed of becomes a strong testimony that God took you from there to where you are now. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, you will have testimonies in this season of binging on God's word you will have testimonies. Your testimonies will be, will be piling up, piling up, piling up in the name of Jesus Christ. You will have abundance of testimonies. The things that you are not able to do, don't worry about them. 
in this season, Paul said, I commend you to God and to the word of his word, which is able. What you are not able, the word is able. What you are not able to do, the word of God is able. The word of God is able to touch and get to places that you are not able to get to. You will do more than you are able. You will experience, you will express, you will get done more than you are able. You will give more than you are able. You will pray more than you are able. You will receive more than you've been able to receive before now in the name of Jesus Christ. But there's something he added here. He said, his word will not return to him void. How does God's word return to him? How does God's word return to him? Remember, he compared it to rain. You know how rain returns to the clouds? Rain, the rain falls. Then the rain is absorbed in the earth. It waters the earth, makes it bored. And then it goes all the way into the sea. And then it's absorbed as water vapor back into the air. But it has to go through the earth. It doesn't just fall, come halfway and go back. So when it now comes to the word, he compared it with the rain. And he said it does not return void. How does God's word return to God? God's word returns to God through our confession. When you speak God's word back to him, it does not return void. Look at the book of Acts chapter 4. Let's look at the place where they did this. Acts chapter 4. I love this story. They were threatened, verse 23, and being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God. This means that they prayed far better. Whenever you hear that phrase, the Bible says about Jesus as well. He lifted up his voice and said, so when they had that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, so they were praying, but look at their prayer. Their prayer was, it was a returning of God's word to him. Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. See, that's our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. They first worshipped him. Who by the mouth of your servant, David said, they immediately after the worship, they brought the word. Who by the mouth of your servant, David said, why did the nations rage? And the people plot vain things. The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly, against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. They lifted his voice, his words back to him. They put it in their, their mouth and they sent it back. And God said, it will, not, it will not get back to heaven void. It will accomplish what it was sent. So we need to learn to put God's word in our mouth. It's called confession. We need to learn to put God's word in our mouth and speak the word of God. Prayer is more potent when it is you returning God's word to him like they did here. If you go back and look at this scripture, where they quoted from, the Bible says, talked about what will happen. God, the Bible says God will hold them in their reason. God will, now God will embarrass them. And they said, you said you are going to do this. And so they were returned. He said they will not return to him void. We need to start declaring God's word. So that's the second part I said I want to bring in. As I was praying yesterday, God, God said to me, also, as they are binging on the word, tell them to declare it. You know, take time. You go to bed and you are you are on. You find yourself unable to sleep. Get out your confession now. I, I'm going to encourage Pastor Bola to 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 get the confession across to and all of the leaders. Binge and declare. Thank you, Zach. Binge and declare. Ah, man, your life will never be the same. Binge and declare. Just, just you know, to get your confession out and start confessing. Hebrews chapter four, and um, I'll, I'll, I think I'll wrap. I'll be wrapping it up at that point. Hebrews chapter four, and verse um, twelve, from verse eleven. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of unbelief or disobedience. 
For the word of God, the rest is in the word. For the word of God is living. You see, that? let the word of God become home for you. That's the rest. For the word of God is living and powerful. I want you to see why the word. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. You see, it doesn't matter what's going on. You don't even need to understand what's going on. The word will take care of it. And he used, the, he used his sight. And he was talking about the word. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. God and his word are one. So anything God can do, his word will do. The ability of God is released in his word. So when you binge on it and then begin to declare it, and declare it like, like, allow me to use that word respectfully, crazily. A lady came to me many years ago, and she said that she has demons. She has a demon that comes to sleep with her. I've never heard something like that before. A demon? I said, tell me, what do you mean? Is it that a demon-possessed man is, is raping you? She said, no. She said she goes to her bed, lies down, and she says that just before she drifts off, she sees this being. You know that point where you are, you are, you are not sure if you are fully awake, but she said she can't move her body. She can't move her hands. She can't move anything. She just lies down there. This being comes in, walks right through the door, through the door, doesn't open it, and she can see the being come in. And the being becomes intimate with her. And she said when she wakes up the next morning, all the signs of um, someone who has had that level of int uh, had intimacy with a guy are all on her body, physically on her body. I said, do you mean like you can touch it? You can clean it? Yeah, she said, on her body. That That's not fluid from her. I mean, it's crazy. So I said to her, no problem. I said, I, do you speak in tongues? She said, no. I said, okay. I prayed with her, God, I feel with the Holy Spirit, and she began to speak in tongues. So I said, when you go home, I want you to slot in a message. One of the messages, then we used to use cassettes and CDs. I said, play a CD. Now, today it's easier. You can go on YouTube. You can... You can just have YouTube play one thing after the other for you. You can have a playlist on YouTube. You can have it on every, every, every available voice right now, right on your phone. So I said, you know, uh, uh, take one of those CDs of mine, play them, and play them and sleep off. You see, because the same way you leave the light on, you can actually have the word of God playing if you want to. No condemnation if you don't. But it's, it's, don't, your spirit doesn't sleep. Your spirit doesn't sleep. So I said, play, play it and start speaking in tongues and sleep off with that. She said she went home that day. It was a Sunday. And she started playing that message. It wasn't a particular message. I just said, pick any of the messages. As, as she was playing it, she, she slept off, speaking in tongues. And she said, just as that same phase where she's almost drifting off like that, she said that being walked in again. So ordinarily, she would have just assumed she had a bad dream. But she said when she wakes up, she can see all of the stuff, you know, that shows you've had that level of intimacy. And so she said the being walked in. I mean, came, came to the apartment, the, the compound. She lives in a bungalow. I said the, the being walked around, walked around, walked around looking for an entrance. And then, you know, got so agitated and angry and just turned around and left. That was a Sunday. I was talking to her the next Sunday. And she said, since then, it has never, never happened again. And that was it. She was set free from it. Binging on God's word, praying in the spirit. I want to encourage you. Start confessing God's word. Start confessing God's word. Uh, uh, um, you are not able to sleep, confess the word. You are not able to, you, 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 you wake up in the middle of the night, instead of rolling over and play, confess the word. You know, 
binging, they've, 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 they've been binging already, right? Add confession to it. Add confession to it. And speak the word of God. You will see the results multiply. Multiply. You know. Um, I, I even put declaring the word and praying the word as the same thing. Because when you are declaring the word of God, you are you are returning the word to him. You are returning the word to him. So that's the word of God for us today. Join in these meetings that we're having every morning. Spend some time in the course of the day and keep the lights on. Keep the lights on. Of course, you know, there is wisdom here that needs to be applied. We know that you have to probably go to work. We know you have to pay attention to your work. It's also part of your responsibility. Um, you know, but in the middle of all of that, we find ways to eat. <laughs> Praise God. Top up during the midday. We find ways to eat. We find how somehow to, to put something in our tummy. You know, the drive to work, the drive back from work. They asked Kenneth Gloria Copeland one time, how long is it from um, one city in the US, I can't remember the name, to another city? And but I remember her answer. She said three Charles Caps tips. She did she was trying to calculate how many in kilometers, but she couldn't guess. She just said, I know it's three Charles Caps tips because every time I'm on that road, I get to finish three Charles Caps tips. Charles, this, those days, a tape would be about a case set would be about 90 minutes or 60 minutes. Said so three Charles Caps tips. We need to you need to start knowing how many tips, how many messages between your home and your office. <laughs> And how many messages on your way back? How how solid, how strong was that traffic coming back? It was two Pastor Noel's messages strong. <laughs> you know, ah, no, 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 I don't want to take that traffic again. It's it's at least two Pastor Noel's messages strong. It was a terrible traffic. I spent two, and I know Pastor Noel's messages at least an hour. I spent two hours in traffic. Binge on the word. And then confess the word and confess the word. Praise God. In the course of this um, first fast track speech, we're going to be looking at, at some other things. But this, these two things is the beginning of your journey. And you will start seeing immediate change. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. He said, my burden is light. Um, a lady came to me. Let me close with this. She said, um, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. And I said, I've probably seen you. I said, I'm just tired. I, right now, I want to just go all out and, and do whatever I need to do to make it. First of all, is there someone who is saying you should not do what you need to do to make it? Or do you mean you want to go and start doing what you should not be doing in order to make it? As a lady, and I know when people say that, they mean they want to... I mean, they, Got to use what you have to get what you want. You know, this kind of nonsense that people throw around on social media. So I figured she wanted to start trying some stuff. You know, you want to start trying some stuff. Pastor Brenda, that's very true. And I'm thinking to myself, how is it that people can get so desperate? I want you to think. And this is another proof that there is a devil. There is, there are demons. And most people don't even know that that restlessness when it comes to the word is demonically, allow my English if not correct, demonically engineered. And you need to tell yourself, you know what? You're going to sit down here. You're going to, if you, if you want to cook, you want to sweep the house, that word, that message will keep playing no matter what. If you fall asleep, you will, it will be playing. It will be on repeat. You will get up. You will keep hearing it. If you are cooking, have you thought about it? Why is it that our nose can both smell and, and, and breathe? Our mouth can eat and talk. But the, the things that have to do with taking in God's word, like our ears, does only one thing. One thing, our eyes. They are not connected to our activities during the day. Think about that. If, if, if your ear, your hand is what you used to hear, you're, when you're driving, you can't hear. When you're cooking, you can't hear. But your ears, that part of you that 
All it does, it does not do, you can't say, well, I was frying eggs with it. That's why, no, no, no. Let him eat that have ears, let him hear. Because nothing else is stopping it. Your cooking is not stopping your hearing. Your washing is not stopping your hearing. Your bathing is not stopping your hearing. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. <laughs> so when she started telling me that, uh, uh, um, that she's ready to do anything, and I thought about it, why is it that when people are desperate, they don't, they don't turn towards letting that desperation make them go extra and excess in confessing the word. They don't, it doesn't go in hearing and hearing. Let the guy say, you know what, Satan, you know, I'm gonna, I'm going to turn on this, I'm gonna hear this message again and again and again and again and again and again. I'm gonna sleep off hearing it, wake up hearing it, I'm going to cook hearing it, I'm going to drive to work hearing it, only when I get to work and I need my mind to focus on something that I will now turn it off. Because you dared me, because you tried me, because you made this. Let that anger go in that direction. They want to quit. They want to cave in. They want to, you know, try other things. So I said to this lady, I said, have you been praying the word? Have you been binging on the word? Have you been confessing the word? When you start asking these questions, you now see that the desperation has not made them do what they should do. The Bible tells us what you should do. He said, if, if, if you abide in me, that's talking about you fellowshipping with him, you know, spending time in prayer. If you abide in me and my word, and also being born again, being born again means you're in Christ. And my words abide in you. You will ask whatever you will. So let the word abide in you. Let the word be at home in you. You will ask whatever you will to be done. Have you been doing that? Have you have you been binging on the word? Then you start hearing them go, uh, no, not really. I, I've been, I've been. But you're willing to go meet a witch doctor who will tell you, a witch doctor tells somebody, Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. And sometimes because it's so easy, we disregard it. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. The witch doctor says, go and sleep with a prostitute or a woman at the cemetery. People will do that. The witch doctor says, get the fingernail of a toad and the left breast of a snake and the eyelids of a tiger. People get up, they go start looking for it. Crazy stuff, out of desperation. A, a witch doctor will say, I want you to go get an albino, kill the alb albino and bring his teeth. They will go looking for an albino to kidnap. And the Bible tells us that my yoke is easy. It's easier than what those people are asking you to do. It's easier than having to kidnap someone to kill for money. It's easier than the struggle that you're already experiencing. <laughs> Praise God. As easy as that light is on, as easy as this camera is on, as easy as my air conditioning can be on, as easy as that, the word of God can keep playing around you. And as long as it's going in through these ears, it is doing something. You don't even have to, to cut off everything you are doing. I did a teaching many years ago called Just Press Play. You're feeling tired, just press play. You're worn out, just press play. You're excited, just press play. You feel invigorated, just press play. Let the word of God keep playing. Yes, I, that's the title, Saya, you are correct. Press play and pray. That's the title. Press play and pray. Praise God. I hope this blessed somebody. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for the opportunity to hear your word.
I ask that you help us live out what we are learning. I pray for grace for everyone right now, that they would live out what, what we've learned today. Grace, Lord, to stay in this place where the, the word of God is at home in us and we are at home hearing it. In Jesus' mighty name.